there, I'm going to show you about the about crocheting in the round. Now first, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is a circle crocheted in the round. We start with 12 stitches at the beginning. I'm going to tell you what changed my life when it comes to crocheting in the round. Each of these stitches in the first round is the point of a wedge or a pie slice. Every round after that is part of that pie slice. Every round increases by one. See, this one is one. This is two. There's only one stitch to increase in. This is three. I increased in the last stitch. This is four. I increased in the last stitch. And this is five. I increased in the last stitch. Some people increase in the first stitch of a wedge, but I prefer to do the last. It's up to you, really. Some people stagger their increases because they think that this sort of a line that delineates the wedges is unattractive. In this particular piece, it doesn't show that much, and even when it does show, I don't mind it because it makes sense of it all. Different patterns start in different ways. This one starts with um, starts with a circle of of twelve. Now, this is how I do it. Some people use the magic ring, and I have no objection to using the magic ring. I simply don't do it because, frankly, I haven't quite figured out how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I've chained four, I slip stitch into the first chain, and now I'm going to start my stitches. I start with a chain three. That counts as the first double crochet. This is something very important. Listen. Okay, we go into the center of the ring to start our second crochet. Anytime you start a row or a round with a chain three, or any kind of a chain that is supposed to stand in for a stitch, you make sure that the next stitch is just as tall as the chain. So that's... Three. Okay. Four. And notice I'm crocheting over the tail. So I'm securing in the tail. And then when I have finished the ring, I can pull the tail and it'll tighten up the hole in the middle. Okay, how many do I have? I have one. Three more. Check again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, including the initial uh, chain three. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first chain three. Some people take great pains uh, about which loops they actually go into when they slip stitch. I don't. And here we go. You see, I have pulled this tail tight and then my um, circle is a little tighter. It might not look completely flat right now, but that's okay. Now I'm going to chain three again.
that's my first double crochet of this um, round. And you see, this is the stitch I was in where I had slip stitched. So I'm going to do another double crochet there. And then I'll do, this is the next double, uh, the next stitch. So I do a double crochet there. If I can get my yarn to stop splitting, I'm going to work that stitch over. See, you just keep calm and it works. I do a second double crochet. And then I do two double crochets in every stitch all the way around. You see, I'm increasing in this wedge. Okay, now we have done two stitches, two double crochets in every stitch from the previous round. I'm going to double check, I'm going to count again. You can never count too many times. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, including that initial chain three. And we join to the top of the chain three. Be careful here. This loop is the top of this post. That is not the top of our chain three. This is the top of our chain three. And here we go. Now we're gonna start the third round. One, our chain three. That counts as our first double crochet. And you see we have, this is our increase from the wedge that we're working on. You always do your increase when you're increasing by one every row. I always do my increase in the second stitch of the increase from the row below. That helps me with counting. So if it helps you, you could actually use stitch markers to keep track of every single wedge. Okay, here's the beginning of the wedge. We put one crochet here. And since this was an increased stitch, we put two double crochets in the second stitch of the increase. And this is another new wedge because we've got an increase here. One double crochet. And then two in the second stitch of the increase below. So you've got the idea. You can join me at the end of this round. And here we are at the end of round three. And I have gone around and checked that all of my wedges have a double crochet and then an increase in the second stitch of the increase below. Double crochet and an increase. Double crochet and a double crochet increase. So you see what we're doing here. Now, again, we slip stitch into the top of the chain three. Remember, this is not the top of the chain three. This is the top of this post. This is something to remember. If you're going in the same direction, like when you are um, crocheting in the round, there are some other patterns where you just tie off at the end of the run one row and start again at the beginning without turning your work. Uh, so you'll still be going in the same direction. When you're going in the same direction, it might appear as if the loop for a post is slightly before the loop. Whereas if I turn my work, it appears as if the loop for that post is slightly after the work. This is most common if you're going back and forth in rows. But since we're not, we're going in the same direction and the loop is slightly before the post. So we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain stitch. No, nope, don't do that. Yep. And then we're going to do our fourth round. Can you guess what we're going to do now? This initial chain three counts as the first double crochet. 
and then we do a second double crochet and then because the second double crochet is in the first stitch of a double crochet increase the second stitch of the double crochet increase gets another increase so on round three the wedge had three double crochets on round four the wedge has four double crochets are you seeing the pattern here i'll just do one more time that's one two three Oh, okay. So here we have, this is the wedge. Okay, here we go. Here's the initial, um, the point of the wedge. Second row, or second round has two double crochets. The third round has three double crochets. And the fourth round has four double crochets. So why don't you keep working in this um, pattern and I'll meet you at the end of this round. And here I have completed five rounds and you can still see the wedge or pie slice principle is in effect. So this is the most basic pattern, the most basic principle for crocheting in the round. Different patterns might give different instructions, so of course always follow what the pattern says. This is very basic stuff, and this is what you'll find in probably most of the uh, patterns that start with this kind of crocheting in the round. Um, but anyway, so the things we've learned here, we have the, the wedge of the pie principle where we are increasing by one each round and we are aligned all the way back to the very first round so in this round is 12 we increase by the number of stitches there are in the first round 12 24 36 48 60. other things we have learned or we have discussed when you do a chain three to start a round or a row, always make sure that the stitches that come after it are just as high as the chain. Otherwise, you're going to get an awkward gap. Also, when you are working in the same direction as the round or the row before, which is typical, not always the case, but typical when you're crocheting in the round, the loop associated with a particular post is going to appear slightly before the post. If you are going in the opposite direction, which is typical for going in rows, it's going to appear, say working in this direction, it's going to appear slightly after the post. And there are times when that concept will be invaluable, uh, particularly if you're alternating different kinds of stitches, if you're doing um, cables, if you're in any kind of a pattern where counting is, is integral, is of paramount importance. I say counting is always of paramount importance, but when it's even more important than that, that's what you do. And this is all of my tutorial for crocheting and the round. I hope I have made a few things a little more clear to you. Please tell me in the comments if you have any questions, if I have made something more clear to you, if I've made something less clear to you, um, and I will try to mend my ways in the future. Come back for my next tutorial where I start with this very circle and I make a hat like this, which I think is very nice. I have pictures on Instagram already of this hat. 
That is my promise for the next tutorial. But thank you for coming and, and uh, listening to this tutorial. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, all of the common YouTube stuff, and keep coming back. Bye-bye.